Decree of the Holy See on the New Versions of the Apostolic Constitution Sacramentum Ordinus, 11 April, 2024 Anno Domini. Official Decree of the Holy Apostolic See of Rome, in exile, by His Holiness Pope Jacobus I, on the evidently fabricated new and thus fraudulent versions of the Apostolic Constitution of Pope Pius XII Sacramentum Ordinus, on the Sacrament of Holy Orders, November 30, 1947, and its fraudulent use by the enemies of God and His Church, for the purpose to impose on the Roman Catholic Church the entirely new rite of ordination and episcopal consecration, which new rites of ordination and episcopal consecration are thus declared null and utterly void. This same fraud was carried out with the manifest intent to destroy the genuine Catholic priesthood and episcopate, which perversion took place after the death of our predecessor of blessed memory Pope Pius XII whom this decree fully exonerates from these false accusations of him being the actual alleged author of this new version, which examination performed in this our decree is binding in conscience, and it is made with the use of our supreme apostolic teaching and magisterial authority and thus bearing the divinely granted seal of infallibility, by the grace of God. Given from our present exile, away from our rightful place in the Vatican City, in the fourth year of our visible pontificate, on the 11th day of April, 2024 Anno Domini. Jacobus Primo, Papa et Pontifex. Today, we would like to uh, record this uh, important publication because of the, uh, of the necessity, what is being used as a uh, for deception on part of the heretics, the excommunicated heretics that are insinuating and in fact using it for their purpose to present themselves as, as if they were arbiters in the matters of the, uh, the sacrament, especially the essential sacrament for the continu apostolic continuation of the church, that is the episcopal consecration. And so, uh, this goes all the way back after the death of uh, our predecessor of blessed memory, uh, that was Pope Pius XII in 1958. He died in fall, uh, um, I think it was the end of September, perhaps in that in that time uh, if, of 1958 on Domini. And so then they were already pre pre preparing this scheme, and it's, it is truly so cunning that it needed our attention to actually to study the subject and to explain it. We, had, we have already uh, presented uh, partially the, the, the findings that we have on the subject, but we then decided that to, it is truly necess necessary, necessary to publish this, uh, our decree today and to, ma to make, make it into, into canonical and actually uh, magisterial uh, 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 decree as it is uh, because otherwise these people will continue and they will continue regardless in uh, pushing this forward without understanding of what truly took place. Uh, those who are subject to these heretics, they would uh, fall into their trap and truly absorb what they uh, should and must in conscience reject. So it is called the decree of the Holy See of the, on the new versions of the Apostolic Constitution Sacrament of Ordinis, 11 April 2024, Anno Domini. This is just the initial uh, forward in the uh, in the beginning of the of this uh, publication or decree today, but this is the canon, and that's the only canon in regards to this, and it pertains to the Sacrament of Holy Orders. If anyone said that the essential form and matter used from the time immemorial by the Roman Catholic Church were valid and true Catholic bishops in order to confer the dignity and the sacramental use of the Kaika office of the genuine Catholic priesthood and episcopate, that this same form and matter can be altered at pleasure as the time, times are progressing and even by manifest heretics and apostate sectarians, and that this essential form and matter has not been protected by the Holy Council of Trent, Session 23, Holy Orders, Canon 4, and, in fact, also Canon 7, 
regarding the exclusive powers to administer this sacrament reserved solely to valid Catholic bishops, so that Catholic priests cannot participate in its essential parts validly. And if anyone said that the Pope has authority to declare the essential form and matter to be contrary to what the Catholic Church has always understood and used, which form is recorded in the Holy Scripture, and thus it is part of the divine deposit of faith, and if anyone holds that the understanding of what the essential form and matter of the Catholic Church's ordination and Episcopal consecration is, that it can be changed and still be even then valid, let him be anathema, that means cursed, excommunicated. Sacrament of Ordinis, that was published on November 30th, 1947 by Pastor 12, but what they say today it is, is completely altered to the point that it is truly heretical in, in fact. And that is notation, not a banner, a heretical forgery highlighted below of the enemies of the Catholic Church, which, if past the twelfth, truly promulgated, which these proponents of this forgery suggest without any proofs from the original document, it's not that they're not presenting the original document. And he would be burning in hell now because these holy rites are fully protected and specified by the Council of Trent, Session 23, Holy Orders, Canon 4, and Session 7 on Sacraments in general, Canon 13. Uh, so we scroll down to that point where it actually speaks about this, but then we would uh, like to present this. Uh, Wherefore, after Invoking the divine light be of our apostolic authority and from certain knowledge declare and as far as may be necessary decree as past the twelve and provide that the matter and the, the only matter of the sacred orders of the diaconate, the priesthood and episcopate, episcopacy is the imposition of hands and that the form and the only form is the words which determine the application of this matter which univocally signify the sacramental effect, namely the power of order and the grace of the Holy Spirit which are accepted and used by the Church in that sense. The Holy Ghost. Well, he specifies this, so then when we go further, he speaks about the uh, signify, that it's inevitably signify the sacramental effect. Namely the power of order and the grace of the Holy Spirit. So then, we will skip the diaconate because that's not that important for continuation, but the priesthood and all this. This is what they say that it is. It is truly heretical because it's just contrary to Council of Trent. Right here. This is what they say that he said. If he said this, that, that he would be burning in hell as, as, as heretic, and he would be excommunicated before that. In the ordination to the priesthood, the matter is the first imposition of hands of the bishop, which is done in silence. That's not true. That's contrary to the dogma of the church. I will present that. That was Gregory IX, as far as back as 1200s. I will, well, that's uh, recorded in Densinger, 445. And it was that the, 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 the imposition of hands must be followed by the, by, must, be, must be accompanied by the words of a consecration or ordination. So this is not, this is evidently for publication right here, because it cannot be done in silence. That's not the essential point which is done in silence, they sang, but not the continuation of the same imposition through the extension of the right hand, nor the last imposition to which are attached the words Asipa Spiritum Sanctum, Quorum Remis Deris, Peccata, etc. And the form consists of the words of the preface, of which the following are essential and therefore required for validity. And then they sang what it is, we will not repeat it because that's not the essential form. And finally, in the Episcopal ordination or consecration, the matter is the imposition of hands which is done by the bishop consecrated. The form consists in the, of the words of the preface, of which the following are essential and therefore required for validity. The Church has never understood this way, and never even thought this, and it's contrary to Council of Trent. This is heretical forgery that these people have infested. So, it is impossible that this was published by by true pope, absolutely impossible, because every pope would know that he would burn in hell if he did that. This is in fact a publication that was uh, published in uh, 1960, and uh, 
so we have highlighted it. It says on on here. It's a picture, so we can't really highlight it as it is. But it says on the, on the on the bottom side, the post, uh, left side, bottom corner, it says the apostate constitution sacrament ordinance. It will zoom in a little bit more so that it's visible. And uh, so it says then we have to go to the right, so we have to go back up. In the ancient church, there's no sign. This is what they're saying. They're not quoting. And they are, but this is what they're saying. So they have mentioned only very sporadically without actually verbatim repeating what we have just read from that new version. Because they didn't, they were afraid that this would come out and that somebody would still take notice that this is impossible to be published. So it says in the ancient church, there is no sign. This is of the, of the public, of, of the, and these were so-called Jesuits in St. Mary's, Kansas, in the United States, who published this. In the ancient church, there is no sign of any handing over of instruments as a rite in the ordination of the diaconate and priesthood in the Middle Ages, however, and so forth. And then it says, in the latter church, between the uh, uh, practice between the ancient and so forth, the Western church gave rise to lively theological debate over the matter and form of the sacrament. Without giving any decision of the speculative question, questions involved, Pius for Pius XII has definitely settled for the future that the presentation of the instruments is not necessary for the validity of these orders. Further, he determines in the Constitution Sacrament Ordinance, November 30, 1947, the matter and form for the diaconate priest and episcopate. But they are not mentioning what it explicitly he said on that regard, what we just read. So this is what he said. They just, uh, after referring to the ceremonies used in ordination, recalling the Roman Church acknowledgement of the validity of the Greek ordination rite, the pontiff speaks as follows. The conclusion from this is that the substance of validity of the sacrament, the handing over of the instruments, is not required by the will of our Lord Jesus Christ himself, even according to the mind of the Council of Florence. Nevertheless, if any time the handing of the, and so forth, Therefore, after praying by the light via as a holy orders, the acronym is the imposition of hands and that alone and the form, likewise the only form, is the words determining the application of this matter, which words signify in a, that's on the left here, univocal sense, the sacramental effect, the power of order and the grace of the Holy Spirit, and which are understood and used by the church in this sense. Hence it is that we should declare with our apostolic authority and determine even if there ever was any different legitimate prescription that the handing over of the instruments, at least in the future, is not necessary for the validity of the holy orders of the Iaconate priesthood and episcopate. That's all they saying. They are not mentioning the essential form at all. What he has decreed in that what we have shown that is this is 1960 publication now even this was a dishonest uh, publication as it is but we will show even more what they saying these people uh, on uh, in this regard because they have decided that they will force this upon the church and they think that they can just plainly attach this to their own uh, conclusions. And it truly, if this was true, it truly did open the door for the novels of the sect. And for their, they wanted to destroy the sacrament of all the orders. That's how serious it is. So this is uh, the actual publication that we have just spoken about. And... Um, so, which was published in St. Mary's, Kansas. But there is some significant thing that needs to be explained. And that's in the beginning. We'll see if we can find it. And it says right here, it's a PDF file of that what we have got on, online. It was very hard to get. 1973 reprint. But it says 1955 imprimatur then they using imprimatur but then it says 1973 reprint 
the Macmillan company has given permission to use the following quotations from the New Testament of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They actually went to a publisher who is subject to the authority of the church and asked permission to use quotations from publication of the property of the church, which is the Holy Scripture. That in itself should warn and show you this part right here. Should warn people not to have anything to do with any such things. Moreover, that confraternity publication is such a bad translation and that uh, changes the meaning of the of the Dewey Reims translation is much more. Uh, so this is from the United States. This is what they had. So this is the actual picture from that initial page. We had to go back and uh, and find it. And it says right here, third printing, 1960, right there. So this is this publication in front of 1960. Third printing, 1960. So. Obviously, that's, that's the indication that it was two years after the death of Pius XII. And uh, that is essential information. It's on the bottom of that, of that page right here. The actual, that's from that previous page, uh, the Macmillan Company has given permission to use the following quotations from the New Testament and so forth. This should surely strike um, fear into people how this is even possible that it went so far that these people have done this kind of damage to the church so it is 1960 print and of course they can insert things afterwards and afterwards and afterwards which was the case that's what they they did obviously so we will go to the screenshots and they are truly important now why is it so because the screenshots tell why is it that these people have fabricated it. So first we go to um, Pontificale uh, Romanum from 1896. That is right here. And uh, that Pontificale Romanum, that's the, uh, one of the pages. And then we'll go to um, the actual close-up. That's right here. That's the Episcopal Consecration Ceremony. Uh, we go back to that. Uh, that's the on the left side is the Latin, and the right side is the English translation. So this is the close-up of that English translation. This is the essential moment where the, and it says right there in the notation, then the consecrated and the assistant bishops touched with both hands the head of the one to be consecrated, saying, Receive the Holy Ghost. The imposition of hands with prayer is the essential right by which episcopal power is conferred. So, obviously, clear contradiction. This is 1896. 1896 print. It was done during the uh, primacy and the, the primate of the United States, the Archbishop of New York. Archbishop Michael Augustine uh, Kerrigan, I think that was the name. And uh, so this is visible that the, it says that's, that's how the church always understood it. There's more to it. That's Council of Trent. Section 23, Holy Orders. Canon 4. If anyone said that by sacred ordination the Holy Ghost is not given, and that vainly therefore do the bishops say, receive ye the Holy Ghost, that the character is not imprinted by that ordination or that he who once have been a, a priest can again become a layman let him be anathema he's cursed he's communicated so this is from the uh, encyclical letter apostolic i cry of uh of process of blessed memory Leo 13 september 13 1896 anno domini this is just uh the page that we wanted to show and uh, you can read the inscription and so forth but then uh, this is illustrating that he understood that the that the essential form is received the holy ghost 
for once a new rite has been initiated in which, as we have seen, the sacrament of orders is adulterated or denied, and from which all idea of consecration and sacrifice has been rejected, the formula received the Holy Ghost no longer holds good because the Spirit is infused into the soul the grace of the sacrament, comma, and the words for the office and work of a priest or bishop and the like no longer hold good, but remain the, as words without the reality which Christ instituted. Not only that, but that's the effect of intention right here. That's pop, uh, con uh, another page from the same encyclical. By this same argument is refuted the cont contention of those who think that the prayer Almighty God, giver of all good things, which is found at the beginning of the ritual section, might suffice as a legitimate form of orders, even in the hypothesis, hypothesis that it might be held to be sufficient in a Catholic, Catholic rite approved by the Church. With, that's, a, that's, a, that's a complete fabrication part of those who were uh, proposing this. There was a similarity with the Novosoto sect and also used this fabrication as we have in, uh, uh, illustrated in the Sacrament of Ordinance. Uh, that new form is, is uh, striking, really. With this inherent defect of form is joined the defect of intention, which is equally essential to the Sacrament. The Church does not judge about the mind and intention in so far as it is something by its nature internal, but in so far as it is manifested externally, she is bound to judge concerning it. When any one has rightly and serious, uh, seriously made use of the due form and the matter requisite for effecting or conferring the sacrament, he is con considered by the very fact to do uh, what the church does. On this principle rests the doctrine that the sacrament is truly conferred by the ministry of one who is a heretic or unbaptized, provided the Catholic rite be employed reg uh, in regards to unbaptized, means the, uh, the only one that can be done is sacrament of baptism as it is. So, we'll go a little further. This is from Holy Scripture, St. John chapter 20. And it's a reference, this is from the uh, reprint of uh, Dewey Reims from early 1600. And it speaks about when he breathed, uh, Allah breathed on the apostles and said, Receive the Holy Ghost. He gave the Holy Ghost in and by an external sign to his apostles, not visibly and to all such purposes as afterward at Vitsantite, that means the, the day of Pentecost but for the grace of the sacrament of orders, the grace of the sacrament of orders, when Allah breathed on them, that's his, his use of the, of the matter as God himself, the church does it by imposition of hands. The grace is from, if you by the words, but our Lord pro pronounced at that moment, which are, receive ye the Holy Ghost, receive the Holy Ghost. And then he added, who since that's the commission to, uh, we will read it. As St. Augustine said, that none make um, doubt of the priest right in remission of sins, seeing the Holy Ghost is put purposely given them to do the same, in which case, if any be yet contentious, he must deny the Holy Ghost to be God and not to have powers to remit sins, and so forth. So then, it is uh, self-evident that the essential form cannot be some some preface. It cannot be preface because then it is denying this very understanding of the church, and the church has never thought so in the sense of how it is. This is what the SSP has put forward. Um, on the left-hand side is the 1962 form. On the right-hand side, they're saying that this is all uh, valid, the SSPX heretics. This 1968 form of Montini, which is absolutely preposterous and 
invalid. So this is what they're saying, that the essential form is. Uh, it says, the principal consecrator lays his hands, this episcopal consecration regarding, the principal consecrator lays his hands upon the head, it's on the right hand side, head of the bishop elect in silence. In silence. And they're saying this is valid. The 1962 form, this is how it's progressed, that's on the left hand side, right here. That's on the left hand side, and it says, then the consequences of uh, that's from Roncalli. This is how Roncalli communicated himself. Then the consecrated touches with both hands the head of the ordinance, saying, Receive the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. That is done in turn by the bishop co consecrators, who not only must touch with both hands the head of the ordinance while saying, Receive the Holy Spirit, and so forth. So all of a sudden they changed it by Montini to this, and the SSPX actually says that or denies that this is completely invalid. How much more do we want to see? This is absolutely preposterous. So then uh, it is self-evident that these people have no intention to teach the truth. And does it progress even further? Yes, we have shown the excerpt from Daniel Dolan from 2021 in our previous recordings, uh, where he actually does that without imposition of hands. This is Montini with six Protestant ministers who have to institute the Novus Ordo mockery of God, which you know, this, this destroys the priesthood too, because that's the effect of intention. That's on the principle of Officer Guy Corai of that encyclical from Leo 13. This is from Council of Trent, Session 7 on Sacraments in General. If anyone said that the received and approved rights of the Catholic Church want to be used in solemn administration of the sacraments, may be contempt or without sin be omitted at pleasure by the ministers, or be changed by every pastor of the churches into other new ones that in be anathema. So, the Council of Trent protected it. We have shown the sacrament of holy orders how that is protected with explicitly stating the form which is recorded right here. We have shown this before. The vainly therefore, do the, if anyone said the vainly therefore, bishops say, and they say bishops, not priests, bishops receive the Holy Ghost, but in Vyanatema. This is from a Catechism of the Council of Trent. And please observe this, because it speaks about the right of ordination. We will have to zoom again in there it's a little bit small, but it, it's got several points. This is about the priesthood. Finally, placing the hands, his hands on the head, that's about the bishop. Finally, placing his hands on the head of the person to be ordained, the bishop says, to be ordained, the bishop says, receive the Holy Ghost, and then whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven them, whose, and whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. Thus investing him with the, that divine power of forgiving and remitting sins, which was conferred by our Lord on his disciples. These are the principal and peculiar functions of the priesthood. Receive the uh, power to offer sacrifice to God and the celebrate Mass as well for the living as for the dead. That's absolutely departure from, from the, uh, what Pius the Twelve supposedly decreed, so this is catechism of the Council of Trent. If he decreed something like this, he would be a heretic and burning in hell. There's absolutely no, no possibility that this was the case. No possibility whatsoever. That's the example from Roncalli on the right hand side from the Pontificale Romanum in Latin. And that's the forgery that of the uh, what Pius XII supposedly wrote. We have shown this in that recording. And that's it right here. Which they omitted to mention that part. Uh, we have read from it. So this is from that actual book. And the acknowledgement. And the 1960 print, third printing. So, and this we wanted to show. That's the Densinger 445. The matter and form of ordination. Uh, Gregory IX, Pope Gregory IX, was a memory he lived at the time and he knew personally and was actually a member of the Order of the Franciscan and became a member as Cardinal Golini. Uh, so, and then he be, was elected 
to the papacy as Gregory IX, from the letter to Olaus Bishop of Lyons, December 9, 1232. When a priest and deacons, deacons are ordained, they receive the imposition of a hand by corporal touch by the rites introduced by the apostles, and so forth. Moreover, the suspension of hands over the head must be made when the prayer of ordination is uttered over the head. That's a book of dogmas, that's a then singer 445. There's no way around this. This is the authority of the Pope declaring it. So there's, there's no way around this. And this is what the SSPX heretics are saying that what they think the so obviously that makes them heretics because there's not no such thing as silence. They saying this is valid, and it is not valid. It's Martinus duty. And we have shown this, and we have shown this, and we have shown this. No longer holds good. The formula received the Holy Holy Ghost. So this is uh, that video that is absolutely invalid. But it's to prove that. Daniel Dolan on the left hand side that's happened in Brazil in um, the September 29, 2021. He died after that and he was paying for this evil uh, to, uh, to God because they saying this is the essential form. It says actually right there below you can see this, this, the screenshot, the, the, the picture is actually a video. We will play it momentarily but just want to read it. Below you can see the, the part of the they call it consecration ceremony, which actually uh, makes a man a bishop. And uh, that's not true. According to what we had just stated, that's not true. So we'll play it and show it what they actually say. Please observe that he never imposed his hands on the head of that person healing. Jesus, Domine, gratiam, flagianis, ut quid quid elade lamina, in fulgore auri, in victore gemarum, et in multimodis opelis, varietate signado, hoc in eius moribus, actibus que clarexa, this is this is what they say is a physical consecration and it is not Therefore, by our apostolic authority, we condemn these ceremonies as invalid and outright sacrilegious presentations of the enemies of the church were excommunicated by apostolic law uh, of excommunication published uh, in May of 2021 on a domini, and so forth. And we don't need to go through all this. They are listed there as vitandus. But we wanted to address this essentially that surely these people are enemies of the church. They have no intention to teach the truth. They have no intention to go uh, to spread the truth of salvation. They serve the devil, their master, and they have no intention to uh, fulfill the, the mission of the church, which is salvation of souls. And therefore, they are outside the church and also go to such places. And those who dare to say that they are still Catholic and they are not. They are therefore excommunicated and as heretics and they will pay for these uh, these evils to God obviously because to declare one's, oneself a Catholic without seeking whether that's truly Catholic is horrible sin in front of God and uh, that should suffice today it is the dogma divinely revealed outside the the Roman Catholic Church, the true Catholic Church, are presented today solely and only by this Holy Apostolic See of Rome in exile, while a person has the right to sell in pontiff by divine law, uh, divine selection, rather, say, uh, and without a practice of the Catholic faith, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition. 
There's absolutely no salvation. All heretics, infidels, or apostates, or schismatics, or uh, those who uh, go to these places of heretics and think that they are Catholic and they are not, including the enemies of the church, like uh, uh, socialist, communist, atheist, and so forth, they all burn in hell, they all burn in hell. They die in such a state of their soul. And they are excommunicated by this very canon 2314 1917 code of canon law. Excommunication reserved to the Holy See Speciali Mobile because all apostates from the Christian faith and all heretics and schismatics. All is ipso facto and it is reserved to our decision, our judgment. And it is forbidden to minister the sacraments of the church to heretics and schismatics, even though they are in good faith and ask for them, unless they have first renounced their errors and been reconciled to the church. That means they have to abjure the errors, the, the errors that they have professed. Unless they do so, they are outside the church, they cannot be helped. And they will burn in hell. And we say this with great sorrow in our heart and soul. They will burn in hell if they die in such a state of their soul. Do not be one of them. The time of the divine punishment is near. God is offended with this world how people are, but they do not wish to help his church to continue her mission, salvation of souls, and how they wish to be in the hands of the devil, who is their master, and they are his slaves, because they don't love the truth, and they want to be heretics rather than true Catholics.